to YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and we're back today with another video, this time to talk about the AirBot uh, Omnibus F4 Fireworks. So this is one of the boards that uh, AirBot had sent to me to uh, basically uh, create a target for in Butterfly, debug some stuff and as well as test it out. So I'm going to be doing a review for you guys of the board, which I'm going to be putting in one of my Hyfe 6 inch builds. So uh, yeah, I have some big hopes for this board here because it has some fairly interesting features that I haven't seen on other FCs as of yet. And uh, man, this thing is beefy. It has it has some weight to it. So it's, uh, it seems like it's a good quality solid build. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Before we hop on to talking about the uh, Omnibus F4 fireworks, I'd like to touch base with you guys about some of the stuff that I've been working on aside from this. Uh, so let's start off with, actually let's start off with the, uh, the seven inch. So I've been trying to get the seven inch to fly well for, I don't even know, a couple months now. Every week I go out, I try to make this thing fly nice and I always end up just moving the mid throttle oscillations up, down, that's it. You know, it never quite got there. So I got fed up with it and I went and got, uh, ordered myself, um, a Helio from um, I think it was uh, RDQ and I came in I put it on the quad and the first thing that happened was I ended up running into that issue that a lot of guys are running into the crazy roll of death between um, the uh, Helio and the Typhoon V2 which is what I have here this is actually one of the parts that Airbot sent me as well so I was very excited to try out a 4-in-1 32-bit because uh, I've been preaching to you guys that 32-bit is the way to go it makes tuning so much easier so uh, I figured if I could put a 32-bit on the squad as well that would help a huge amount so I put the Typhoon in here and I put the um, the Helio and I was getting the rolls of death and before I get to the solution of that one of the things to note is on the Typhoon and the Helio the harnesses don't quite match up I had to move around I mean I guess I could have remapped the motors I don't really like remapping stuff in software so I literally just moved the pins around on the harness to get the correct orientation because I had to install my Typhoon flipped over it's just the way it worked out this is a very tight build everything that high fucking designs is incredibly freaking tight so anyway got the roll of death and I went and talked to ordinary and I was like hey man what can I do here this roll of death thing is not possible I can't fly this thing long range if I can't trust it because anytime I did a roll or a flip the quad would just drop so he told me basically to just flip the helio upside down so uh, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it here I'm gonna try to show you there's a little gray little thing there come on focus there's a little gray little thing there that's an inductor so that inductor is part of the 5 volt rail of the flight controller and that's what actually what feeds the FC, um, the STM32, the brains of the whole operation. So what happens is when that thing is really close to a 4A1 ESC, it can get some um, electromagnetic interference from the ESC, which causes fluctuations in the voltage, which causes the FC to lock up. So it's not necessarily a desync, it looks a lot like a desync, but it's basically your FC just stops responding because the five volt rail is doing some funky stuff. So basically the fix for it in terms of hardware at least is to either put a shielding between the 4-in-1 uh, and the Helio or to flip the Helio over which is what I did. So now my inductor coil that I just showed you is up and away and it's separated by the PCB of the Helio itself. As soon as I flew it, no problem at all. And man, I gotta tell you, right out of the box, it flew great. It had a, still a little bit of mid throttle oscillations in some spots but man, it was just night and day. So, so far I've flown it a little bit, I tuned it a tiny little bit, basically all I did was increase uh, P gains to about 55 and then I increased my Q gains on all axes to about 4000 right now and I think I can keep going up because my motors are not warm or anything like that and every time I go up a little bit it kills more and more of, that, um, of that, those throttle oscillations. So if I can get that done and get this thing flying smooth, I will post some DVR for you guys and I'll get try to get an HD camera if I can to show you guys this thing flying with the Helio Spring because uh, I am impressed. It's done wonders for my large quad, especially this guy right here, which I was almost giving up on tuning it anymore because I just couldn't get it any any further with the CL Racing F4 and the 8-bit ESCs. I'm not saying that it's all just the Helio. I'm sure the 32-bit ESCs are doing a huge part themselves in uh, improving the flight characteristics and reducing my MTO, but uh, both of them together are a killer combo as long as you remember to flip the board around or, or maybe you're lucky enough to not have that issue. But I had the issue, no big deal, I just flip the board around and it's good to go. So that pretty much covers it in terms of updates on the seven inch. I'm gonna keep tuning it and get back to you guys with some better footage. 
Some other stuff that I've been trying to do lately too is uh, practice more of my Fusion 360 Kung Fu. And uh, I've worked, been working on this guy right here, which is basically like a regulated fat shark cable. Let me get a battery here, I'll show you guys. So basically all it is, there's a Palolo in there, a regulator, and you can see here, it's like, ooh, crazy shiny. Um, this here shows me the voltage display for the uh, battery itself, and up here is just showing me the voltage display for what's going out on the port up here. And the port up there is just an XT30 port, just like that, you can plug it in, and there's a barrel connector here for your goggles, and one for uh, the, uh, the, the fan plate. So you can run the whole thing off this little guy here. There's a nice little on-off switch. I kind of designed this whole thing around this giant freaking knob because uh, I like big switches, I can't lie. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I've uh, been playing around with this. But uh, there's another idea that I've been working on right now, which was uh, as soon as I started designing this and I got about halfway through it, I was like, oh man, why don't I just make this thing work out of 18650s? Why, why even bother with an external battery? So I still finished it anyway because I wanted to finish the exercise and learn the techniques, so I did it. Uh, but I'm already working on a different version that's basically going to use this little pack right here. It's just basically uh, two 18650s tied together. There's a battery management system circuit installed in there that will basically take care of keeping these guys balanced so I can charge them all through one port which is kind of like what the Fat Shark battery pack does, yes I know, but I want one that was made myself, that has a little XT30 so I can plug it in and out, and that I uh, don't have to wear all my goggles themselves. I, I kind of want to just like hook them to my pants or throw them in my pocket or something like that, and I think this form factor here is going gonna, is gonna to win over for sure. But this was a fun exercise. Uh, it was interesting to try and learn how to build an enclosure like this. And uh, if you're interested in building it yourself, you can get the files on Thingiverse. I'll make sure to put a link below. Just make sure that you can find this little guy here. This is the hardest part to source. I was trying to find links for it and I can't find it anywhere. As far as I can tell, it's a 0.56 inch uh, voltmeter just decased. So if you can find one, go ahead and build one. I don't, personally, I only have two more left. So after that, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to find something else. But yeah, that was a super fun little exercise right there. All right, so I think we've covered um, what I wanted to talk about that wasn't about the Omnibus F4. Let's jump into the Omnibus F4 and take a look at what it has to offer. So before we get to there, actually, let me just show you guys one quick little thing. Step off of Amazon. And it's basically just a glorified macro camera, but let me turn it on here and I'll show you guys. So it has a pretty nice bright light. And it has this, what amounts to a digital camera. I am not even kidding you. It's just like a digital camera attached to a 300 time magnifying uh, lens assembly right here. And basically that allows me to look nice and close. Let me just turn off this light so you guys can see without the glare. Boom. So right there, we can see the Omnibus F4. And this thing here will allow me to record and all that. Reason I picked this up is because I was having some trouble with uh, surface mount components because I broke some stuff, wanted to solder it, couldn't do it. So I figured I had to get some better magnification and that's what I picked up. If you guys are interested in it, I can send you guys a link, not an affiliate link or anything like that, just, just a pure thing. So uh, yeah, let's talk about it. Okay, so we're recording 1080p on this uh, microscope thing here. And then we're gonna go through the board with you guys and I'll talk to you guys over here and we'll show you guys a close up of it over here and uh, hopefully it works out for everybody. So, what is the big deal with this uh, flight controller here? So the first thing that you notice right out of the box is the gyro. So it's one of those uh, gyros that is encased in what almost looks like aerogel. I'm not sure if it is or is not. Just looks a lot like it, but it's encased there. And it's really funny because I used to joke around with the guys at the FPV chat that, you know, the future of uh, quads is gonna be gy gyros encased in like a suspension fluid or something insane just to really dampen all the vibration. So I like the direction where this is going. I'm not sure how effective it's really gonna be. And, uh, but there it is. We have the uh, gyro on a little ribbon cable and it's all nicely secured on this assembly right here. And there's just a, a couple little screws down at the bottom here. And that brings me to another thing that I noticed almost right away when I got this board, when I flipped it over, is that I saw I had these, uh, these pads right here really close to where you would install your ESC. So, do you wanna take a guess what these are? These are actually a spot for you to put TVS diodes. So if you've been following around with the channel, 
many moons ago, we talked about a TVS. Uh, there was an idea pushed forward by the wizard on the FPV chat, and uh, we kind of took forward with it to try and test it out, and it seemed like it worked out pretty good. A lot of people still do that. Basically what it does is protects the rest of your sensitive equipment, so basically everything that's connected to this board from dangerous transient voltages coming back and screwing something up. So you can buy your own surface mount diodes and mount them here in reverse polarity. It's very important that they have to be reverse polarity and that they be proper TVS diodes in the first place. So you can mount them right here and that would effectively protect and you can see that it has it on all four corners. So every part of the FC here has a spot for those guys. Very, very interesting. Another thing that you will notice is that there's actually a spot for a, uh, sorry, I believe it might be a current sensor? No, never mind, I misspoke. Anyway, there's a nice bank of capacitors right here too, right on the power line. So I'm wondering if they didn't install this as a way to sort of mitigate having to put on a, a, a real capacitor, a low ESR capacitor. I'm not sure, I might just do this build without a capacitor and uh, see what these little guys can do. I'm not sure what the rating of them is right now. Uh, what else do we notice? So we're looking at the underside of the board right now real quick. So on one of the sides here near the inductor coil that does all of the, basically the voltage regulation right here, we have all the RX and TX pins that you're gonna use. And these ones are for basically your UART SBUS. And we have also, so we have your UARTs for SBUS. We have uh, extra UARTs that you want, might wanna use for something else. And then you have your buzzer pads down here at the bottom. I don't like that these pads are on the bottom side of the board just because uh, I've gotten so used to boards that have almost everything at the top and it just makes it so much easier to build. But uh, we'll have to see when we actually get to it how complicated it is or isn't. It's really just your radio as far as I can tell that you're going to really solder here and maybe your buzzer. So not really a huge deal. So on the other side here we can also see that it has the OSD, uh, sorry, the OSD um, circuitry. It's right over here. And right next to it, right in this little bank, which is close to what I believe to be a secondary port for a gyro, um, not being used at this time. I guess it could be expanded to in the future. But anyway, right over here, we have what is gonna be the pads for your video system. So this includes uh, ground and RAM, which is essentially eight volts from what I can read here on the schematic. Uh, yeah, I believe it's 8 volts, so you can use that for your camera and your BTX. 8 volts, that's not bad. Uh, seems like it's regulated and all that good stuff. And then it has your video input and output over here as well, so that you can just like do the pass through so you can get your OSD. Uh, another thing you notice on the board right away too is that all everything has these notches cut out to them right here. I'm not a big fan of the notches. I kind of like the flat pads, but uh, I guess they're a more secure way to hold your wires. So we'll have to see how it works out when I actually go to build it. And no, I'm not gonna be doing a build video. Those take forever. I'm just gonna show you guys the final result and I'll talk to you guys about how my uh, experience was with building it. And then we'll do the flying and tuning and all that good stuff. Now let's go back to the front side of the board here. So on the front side of the board, on all four corners, and you can no you'll notice too that this board is kind of cut very, very interestingly. Maybe to save weight, I'm not sure, but they cut it in a very, very interesting pattern. Um, each corner has uh, all the pads you need for the motor, which include your power, uh, so plus minus, which is direct VBAT. It also has your um, your ground, your signal, and I believe your telemetry. So these ones here are set up for 32-bit uh, telemetry, which is kind of cool. Not a lot of FC, well, not a lot of FCs before used to do this, but as 32 bits are picking up more and more and more, you guys are doing long range and they want to know uh, how much battery they have, all that good stuff. And guys who are racing or really trying to squeeze an edge out of their gear are gonna start using this sort of feature more and more. So I guarantee you guys the 32-bit is the way. There, there's no turning back. It's gonna get more and more popular as you go for sure. Um, right over here we have I guess the same buzzer pins again, or maybe was I looking at the wrong side? Huh? Interesting enough. Yeah. So it's basically the same set of pins, just reversed. So I misspoke. So you can actually solder it in whichever way you want, which is actually kind of interesting because if you wanted to mount this uh, FC upside down, now it's actually quite simple because you have the pads on both sides except for the video as well. Look at that, the video as well. So that's interesting. So instead of being a through hole, that's kind of what threw me off is that these are like flat like that. Usually if it's a through hole, you know that you can solder it from both sides. But in this case here, you couldn't really tell that. So that, yeah, that's uh, quite interesting, quite interesting for sure. And uh, right here in the front, 
back where we we had the the UARTs and the buzzer, we have some big big fat pads here that you can use for for example your ground five volt and three volts. So for your receiver or something else or some auxiliary function that you might need, you can solder it easily right over here. So first impressions on the board are that it's really really high quality. This thing is really thick and heavy. It looks really well built. I, I haven't noticed any problems in the soldering any problems with any of the components being weird or anything like that. It seems like a really, really good quality board. Um, I'm not sure if the uh, I'm sold on the encased gyro gel thingy, but I'm definitely willing to try, and I'm really curious to see how that's gonna work out on the, um, on the six inch. Reason why I'm throwing this board on the six inch is because it has an integrated PDB, so I can pretty much do my whole build with just this board and then the ESCs spread out on the arms. As I said, High likes to build really, really tight frames, so you really can't do um, like a PDB and an FC or anything like that. It gets really, really tricky. Four in one, no chance. Uh, only on the High Light recently has it been a thing that you can actually do. So guys, that pretty much covers the overview of the Omnibus F4. Overall, the impressions so far have been pretty good. So I'll let you guys know once I get a chance to build it, how that went and then how the Maiden went and all that good stuff. And maybe I'll show you guys some tuning on it as well. So I'll let you know how this board ends up working out for me. Um, there is a butterfly target for it too. So if you have one of these and you want to test it out on butterfly, go right ahead and download it and you'll probably love it. So. Before we end the show here, I wanted to clear up a few things that I've been hearing out there about Butterfly, about the project, and all this other good stuff. So if you're not into listening to that stuff, you don't really care at all, you can go ahead. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. But for those that are interested in hearing, uh, stick around for a minute. So, um, there are some crazy conspiracy theories going around that basically Butterfly is some sort of front for Helio. Or that Helio started Butterfly as a way to, you know, create their own secret GPL, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I'm sorry, that's all pretty much bullshit. Uh, the reason why Butterfly exists is because APOC and myself just didn't agree with the direction that Betaflight was taking with some of their stuff. That, that's that simple. Nothing else. So. Uh, Due to that disagreement, we ended up forking the repo, and originally the plan was to only offer uh, hexes, that there were just gonna be custom hexes that I was just gonna leave up there for people to use. Um, I ended up getting hit with a DMCA takedown, blah, blah, blah message from somebody there. I figured, okay, whatever, try to reason with those guys. They said that I couldn't distribute the hexes by themselves unless I had my own configurator and this, all of this other stuff. So uh, I tried to argue that point, I lost. So I ended up forking the configurator as well and decided to go full force on this project. Me, Ipok and I got together and we're like, yep, yeah, let's, let's freaking do this. So that's how the project got started. Um, shortly after that, I started to notice through looking at the pull requests, what was going on. I saw that Tim Sweet, Ornery, the guy behind Helio RC, was having a really hard time getting through to the Betaflight developers just like I was. He was having the same problems as I was. So I see this guy struggling with the same problem I do. I just started this new project. Obviously the, the, the obvious thing here and reached out to him and said, hey man, if you really need that target because you really need to get this thing out soon, let's work together, let's make this happen and then let's launch Helio with Butter. And crazily enough, the guy agreed. And the rest is history. Seriously, that's how the project started. So um, there's some guys out there saying that we're making money from this. That's also not true. Um, I've disclosed literally everything that we've made so far, including t-shirt sales and uh, the free stuff that I get from manufacturers. I've been telling you guys all about that stuff to make sure that everything is nice and transparent. I don't monetize my channel. I'm not looking to monetize Butterfly. I'm not looking to monetize the Butterfly motors or the frames or anything like that at this point. Um, there's no reason to. I, I, I'm doing this because I enjoy it. I'm doing this because I wanted to do something cool for the community. And I'm doing it because the response of the community has been super cool so far. And uh, it's driving us to keep pushing this forward. So yeah, um, you can keep your conspiracy theories if you like, but that's the reality. We are not Helio, Helio is not us. We're just working together because we have a common goal now and it, it's worked out. We've gelled together very nicely. Uh, just so you guys know, some of our other core people have been Lexio, the guy has been incredibly helpful and with the code side of things. RS2K has been helping a huge amount as well because he's part of the Helio team. He works with Ornery and all that good stuff. So we are trying to bring you guys as many improvements as we can, but uh, we are still a small team, so things can take a little while. 
Um, anyway, guys, that's pretty much all I wanted to clear up. I appreciate you listening and coming to the channel to watch, subscribing, and all that good stuff. So I'll catch you guys next time when we talk a little bit more about the uh, Omnibus F4, fireworks, and whatever else I cooked up from my 3D printer next time. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care.